Quantum Technologies, a world leader in advanced technology for the pulp and paper industry, is working through research and development for new innovations in reducing paper mill costs while improving quality and productivity. They have been conducting pulp bleaching research in their laboratories in Twinsburg, Ohio for over 10 years. Quantum's first high-intensity mixer was developed in 1986 for their own research and development programs. Visitors to the laboratory were impressed by the mixer's ability to duplicate the high shear mixers used in the pulp mills. Sales soon followed. The first quantum mixer was sold in 1987. Since then, a number of features have been added, and the new quantum mixer is now being used in pulp bleaching research in 13 countries around the world. It has truly become the standard in the industry. This video will introduce two new pulp bleaching systems, the ozone caddy and the ozone cart, along with quantum's latest mixer, the model Mark V mixer reactor. Let's start with the Mark V mixer reactor, which has all of the features of the Mark IV. And one new special feature, an ozone sequencer, specially designed for ozone bleaching. This unit controls the number of pulses or shots of ozone, the duration of the high intensity mixing, the timing between shots, and the evacuation sequence. We will see how all of this works a little later in the video. For those of you who already own a Mark II, three, or four quantum mixer, the ozone sequencer can be added to your existing cabinet. But first, let's discuss some of the unique problems presented by ozone. The oxygen and ozone mixture produced by a laboratory generator is unstable, toxic, low strength, low pressure. It takes more than an ozone generator to bleach pulp because the ozone-oxygen mixture must be accumulated pressurized, analyzed, a precise charge must be injected, and any unused ozone must be destroyed because it is toxic. The ozone caddy or the cart will do exactly that. Either unit will accumulate, pressurize, analyze, inject a precise charge, and destroy any unused ozone. Let's start with the ozone caddy. Its 37-step sequence is automated with a self-contained system that accumulates 10 grams of ozone in coated stainless steel tanks and allows the researcher to use any amount at whatever pressure his experiment calls for. He can have one continuous shot of 10 grams of ozone or 30 pulses or anything in between. Let's take a closer look at some of the unique features of the ozone caddy and then we will see how it works. It has its own ozone generator and ozone analyzer. If you already own a generator or analyzer, you can use it in place of our standard units. Buried in the control cabinet is a programmable logic controller to control the process. The stage indicator lights show exactly where the process is during its 45 minute sequence. The automated schematic allows you to follow the automatic valves. The scale computer controls the charge of ozone being sent to the mixer bowl. The large capacity stainless steel tanks code approved by the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. And the stainless steel high capacity ozone scrubber is online to destroy any unused ozone while the ozone caddy is operating. Here is how it works. Oxygen gas feeds the ozone generator, then to the distribution valve system. The analyzer checks the strength while the main stream is being directed to the scrubber. At the same time, the vacuum pump is evacuating T1. Once evacuated, the ozone oxygen gas is channeled to T1. When filled, the ozone oxygen stream is then directed back to the scrubber. Nitrogen then pressurizes and transfers water from T2 to T1. The analyzer now checks the ozone strength in T1. The scale computer is inputted with the amount of water to be transferred corresponding to the desired ozone charge on pulp. The ozone sequencer now controls the number of pulses to deliver the specified ozone charge and the timing of the mixing and the stage. After the ozone injection, the mixing bowl is evacuated. 
Now let's do an actual ozone bleaching stage using the Quantum Mark V mixer, the ozone caddy, and the new patent pending FV extension and rotor. First, we start the oxygen feed to the ozone generator, then turn on the scrubber and hit the start button, all located on the ozone caddy. In about 45 minutes, our green stage light will be lit, indicating there is about 10 grams of ozone in T1 ready for our bleaching experiment. For the bleaching demo, we are going to use a 4-liter bowl with the integrated baffle and the FV extension and rotor. We could have used a standard 2-liter or 4-liter quantum bowl and rotor. However, we chose the FV extension and rotor because it allows us to apply a 1% charge of ozone on 200 grams of pulp in one shot. The patent pending FV extension and rotor was specifically designed to enlarge the pulp-free volume in the bowl to accommodate larger charges of the ozone-oxygen mixtures and still provide high-intensity mixing. Notice the high-intensity mixing pulp zone and the circulating gas ozone. The FV extension and rotor fits any quantum mixer bowl without modification. A pre-measured charge of pulp is loaded into the bowl, and the separator plate is placed over the bowl under the lid. This prevents pulp from plugging the automatic valves in multiple injections. The residual traps are connected. They will catch any unreacted ozone, which allows a precise calculation of the charge on pulp. Back to our ozone caddy. The green light tells us we have ozone ready to use. Now to recheck the strength before injecting. We have calculated the weight of water to be transferred that corresponds to 2 grams of ozone, a 1% charge on 200 grams of pulp, and now input that value to the weight computer. Delivery pressure has been set at 67 PSIG. Hit the green control button, which now makes the predetermined ozone charge available for bleaching. Back to the ozone sequencer on the Quantum Mark V. Set the mixing speed, mixing time, shot clock reaction time, check pH, and check the temperature. Then hit the start buttons on the Quantum Mark V mixer. After the timer runs out, the bowl is automatically evacuated. We have deliberately cut the mixing time short to demonstrate how the residual traps work. Remove the lid and extract the pulp using the pulp evacuator. There is still enough ozone left in T1 for two or three more experiments.